Hey guys, Ashton here from Muse Themes. Super cool widget we're sharing with you today called our Search Essentials widget. This is the first widget release in a new series of widgets we're calling our Essentials widgets. This will be a series of fundamental widgets that serve as great key building blocks for just about any site you could think to design. They're all gonna be very simple to set up and very easily used by any Muse user, whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started for the first time. So looking at our live demo here on our search essentials, you can see a simple but stylish search box placed here on the page, which fits in nicely here, and it's completely stylable. And I can simply click inside to type a search, for example, widgets, and I get automatically forwarded to a results page, which you can create and customize yourself. And it includes this really slick field here showing all the search results, which all hyperlink directly to the page that it's showing. And if I click back, you can see we have an alternate example showing how this can be incorporated into a light box as well, if you choose to do so. And what's really awesome about this particular search widget is that it's completely standalone. There's no linking to any third-party software, no back-end code. So that means no third-party subscriptions, no extraneous monthly fees. This operates 100% within Muse, which is awesome. So I'm going to hop over to Muse. We'll show you how to set this thing up. Now I've already pulled in a template here. I'm using our build theme. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to integrate this widget into even a site that's already designed. So the first page I'm gonna to go to is our master page. Now this widget can be utilized on a single page or it can be used site-wide via a master page. So it's very adaptable. Now if I jump over to our library panel, once you've downloaded the widget file and opened it inside of Muse, you can go ahead and click this arrow to expand the dropdown. And you'll see two components to this widget, both of which are required for it to function. So we'll start with the first component here, the search field. And we'll go ahead and drag this out onto the page. And right away, you're already going to see a generated preview image of a search field right off the bat, which makes this very easy to place and to style. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to jump to our largest breakpoint. And we'll start by finding a nice place for this to sit. So what we'll do for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this phone number field here to make a little bit of space. And I'll go ahead and push this search box up to sit in our header. So we'll leave it sitting there nicely, aligned along the right side. And then for best results, you're probably gonna to wanna to set the responsive behavior of this to none. However, this widget will function great in responsive sites. Now to set it up among your breakpoints, a little trick I like to do is to right click on it and select copy size and position to all breakpoints. As many have found, sometimes when you place new objects onto a responsive site, the placement of said object on the other breakpoints can be a little bit unpredictable. So this is a nice way to get something much closer to where you need it to be. And then from there, in this case, you can just simply click through your other breakpoints and size it accordingly. Now, I don't wanna to spend too much time on that, so I'm gonna go ahead and just work with the largest breakpoint for now, but do know that you can customize it for each breakpoint, which is awesome. So back to our 1200 breakpoint, Let's go ahead and pop open the flyout panel. And you'll notice the setup for this is not very labor intensive. All we have to enter here is the search field text, which you can type anything you want. This will be what the user sees as the prompt in the search box. And I'll just go ahead and change this to something like search here. And the second field here is where you're gonna enter the name of your search results page, which I'm gonna get back to in a moment. So we're just about done here for part one, but first we can apply some styling to this box and you can do that by using the normal Muse styling tools, which is pretty cool. So for the sake of the demo, let's go ahead and make the stroke just a little bit bigger and we can change the color of it to maybe like a really dark blue. And then we can change the font family and size in our text panel. So I'll go ahead with maybe a thinner font and we can go a couple sizes bigger. Perfect. So now we're ready to set up our landing page for the search results. So I'm going to jump back to our plan view. And you do need to make a brand new dedicated page on your site for the search results. So how about I do a simple duplication of our contact page. Just like that. And we're going to have to rename the page. So you want to make this something simple and straightforward. I'll go ahead with uh, results. And then of course, whatever you name this, keep in mind if I right click on this page and go to page properties, you can always change the page title here. And that's what's gonna appear in the browser tab. You can do that if you wish. You can simply deselect this same as page name field and enter whatever you want for the title. But for this widget, it's our page name that needs to be noted and kept simple. So let's hop into our results page. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete the content on it for now, but of course you're welcome to style this page around the widget however you wish. 
So if I go to my library panel once again, I can grab out the search results field and drag it onto the page. And all you're going to see is this big box appear, and this is basically a placeholder marking the territory of the search results area. So I'm going to go ahead and push this up towards the top of the page body, and I'll just make sure it's centered nicely on the page. Simple as that. So let's go into the settings panel of this one, because there's a little bit more to do to get this widget functional. This first field here is very important, included pages. Here is where you need to list the pages of your site that you want searched. So if your whole site is to be considered in the search function, you need to enter each page name here. Now we've included three examples listed in here already, and the reason for that is to show you the exact format that this has to be followed when doing this. Each page you list needs to match the page name exactly using quotes and a .html and a comma to separate each. So just follow the example here exactly as you see it and you'll be good to go. And the last thing to note about this is that your home page will always be labeled as index.html, not home.html or whatever you've named your home page. So now we need our list of pages, so I'm going to jump back out to our plan view. And according to this, we need an index, about, services, service details, reviews, and contact. So if I jump back to the settings panel on our results page, you can see we already have index, about, and contact there, and that matches up. So all we need to do is add a services.html, service details.html, and being sure to include a dash for page names with more than one word, and lastly a reviews.html. Perfect. Below this, you can set how many results you want listed on the first page of results, and furthermore, the word count shown for each result. And this will come in handy depending on how content heavy your site is. And lastly, down here is our styling section for the results field. I'm not going to go into each one of these in detail, but be sure to check them out and test them so that they match your liking. You can adjust the fonts, spacing, and the coloring, and you can style it up to best match your site's tone. Now the one very last thing you need to do, which I mentioned earlier, I would come back to this. It's very, very important to make sure that the name of your results page exactly matches what is entered in the first search bar component. So in this case, we named our page results. So I need to go back to my search bar that we placed on our master page. We'll open the settings panel of the search bar. Then you can already see that we need to change this. So I will make this results.html. And you have to make sure that the .html is always there. Perfect. So now let's do a browser preview and we'll make sure to preview the entire site, not just one page. And beautiful, our search bar is laying nicely in our header. And let's just go ahead and search anything appropriate for this particular site. I'll go ahead and type uh, renovations. And there we go. We get three results already for three different pages, all of which we can click over to. So that's pretty much it for our Search Essentials widget. This is the first of many on the way for our new series of Essentials widgets that we think Muse users, both experienced and novice, are going to get an immense benefit from. They're all going to be very simple to set up, and they're all going to be key widgets to improve the core functionality of just about any site you could muster up. So please keep us posted with any questions, comments, or concerns you may have, and until next time, have a wonderful day.